The end is hard. It's the last inning, the final frame. You'll never sit next to your best friend in quite the same context. This is it. Not many get to play this game. Even fewer get to change it. As a player, you try and live in the moment. But at this point in the story, you can't ignore what's coming next. When your jersey becomes a jacket. You're closer to the end than ever before. Still, there's part of you that thinks the best is yet to come. Because for everything that's changed, this game and these fans still make you feel the same. Breathe deep, soak it in, shake hands with your future. Moments like this don't happen twice. Moments like this don't happen anywhere else. Welcome to The Last Inning, a tribute to Yachty and Albert presented by Cardinals Insider. I'm Ozzie Smith, and as we learned last summer, the end was indeed hard, but the journey was magical. And over the next hour, we'll dive into what Pujols and Molina mean to the Cardinals. We start at the end, as the pair left the field for the final time. A swing and a smash, fair! Inside the third base back, down the left field line. Well, if that's it, Pujols ended with a laser. Molina swings and lines it into right center. That ball gets down for a hit, sending Dickerson Just over to third. not say enough about Albert Pujols and Molina. There's a reason why they're champions. There's a reason why they're going to go into the Hall and of Fame. St. Louis, Missouri, showering both Molina and Pujols with so much love and affection. Yeah, it's not surprising at all to see them get hits in their final bats. It's the winning players they are, and they were setting the table all day for us. And you know, Yadi is uh, Yadi and Albert are to the absolutely the, the tied for the first most clutch players I've ever played with. So not a surprise. I can say where I'm this uniform for 23 years and the big is uh, really proud and I enjoy every single moment. There's nothing to regret. I uh, enjoy every moment in my career. Can you put into words what this town has meant to you? Uh, this is my home. San Luis is my home. Uh, I appreciate all the fun for all the support over many years. I'm going to miss them. wasn't just a feel-good story for Albert Pujols. He put together some big-time numbers and helped push St. Louis into the postseason. His 703 homers put him fourth on the all-time list. His legend grew with every blast. And here's a look at all 24 homers from his final season. In the air, out to deep left, it is! Gone! Welcome back, Albert! It's like you never left! Number 680! And he does it back in St. Louis! Down the left field line! Goodbye! 681! Down the left field line, it is gone! A bomb! Good call right there. Uh oh, uh oh. Albert to left again. I can see that I'm coming. Back toward the wall, and it's a goner. Number 684 for Albert Pools. Albert hits it out to deep left. It is gone. Albert Pools. Home run number 685. Albert lifts it in the air out to center, and that's number seven. 
Albert hits it out to deep left. It's at the wall. Gone! Albert Pujols, 687 career homers. Hits it down the left field line. Big Mac land! 688! 688 home runs with an exclamation. Oh, swings and hits a drive. Deep left center field. It's long, long gone! A His run. second of the day! 689! That is gone! That's a grand slam! Off the bench! Albert launches one. Deep left center, gone! 691! Over and again! Left center, it is gone! He's done it again at the wall! Gone! 693! Albert lifts it in the air out to deep right, gone! 694! It's a gone for Pujols! Six. Number 696. It's at the wall. Gone. He's done it. 697. A two-run home. Albert unloads. Deep left. 698. A swing. A long one. Left center field. That's the gunner. It's a three-run homer, and he hit 699 and 700 at Dodger Stadium on September 23rd. Number 701 in the Big Mac land, his final regular season home game, number 702. Albert hits it down the left field line, number 703, 703, it's history. Cardinals Insider is a team effort, and that includes you. We'd love to hear from you. To get in touch with the show, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click on the Contact Us tab. And while you're there, you can rewatch old episodes and check out our podcast, too. It's all at cardinals.com slash insider. Javier Molina, retired, is one of the most decorated catchers in baseball history, and he might be the most beloved Cardinal of the past quarter century. His longtime battery mate, Adam Wainwright, knows him better than just about anyone. Will 2022 be your final season in the majors? Yes, it would be my finest season. It's hard to imagine Cardinal baseball without you. Over 2,000 games, more than 2,000 hits, and most people have no idea the price you pay. They only see the glory. I think you're the best ever, and playing at that level doesn't come cheap. I can't get there in time and hits the padding hard. Drill after drill, foul ball after foul ball, Swing and a foul, and that one hurt Yachty. You pay the price to be great. You lead by example. You play through the pain. And you're always thinking one step ahead. Did he get him? He did! Oh, what a play by Yachty and Molina! To have 2,000 of anything takes a long, long time. Yachty, what a throw! He got him! And they don't just give these jobs out. 19 seasons, and you've earned every bit of it. At the wall, this ball is gone! St. Louis takes it off Freeman, and this game is gone! Cardinals are world champs! Thanks for playing catch all these years. Adam and Yachty are also extremely close to Albert Pujols. The three playing one final season together was the perfect way to close Yachty and Albert's careers. When I get older, one of the things I'll be the most proud to tell somebody is that Yadier Molina was my catcher every fifth day. 
I mean, that's just a special thing to be able to say that. When Wayno was traded to St. Louis from the Atlanta Braves in 2003, he knew he was teaming up with a special catcher, but he didn't yet understand how Yachty would shape his own career. I, I don't think I'll ever trust anybody as much as I trust him on the field, uh, ever. So when you have that, that level of trust with somebody that stemmed from somewhere, there was roots somewhere that built that into that. Over nearly 20 years, the pair has gotten to know each other through what Wayno calls deep talks off the field. Those discussions about baseball and life built a dual legacy of remarkable moments. At the head of that list is Game 7 of the 2006 NLCS. Then-closer Adam Wainwright was facing Cardinal killer Carlos Beltran with the bases loaded and two out. Comes out to the mound, we talk about a plan, and then he gets back and calls my fourth best pitch that was off the plan, but I had complete trust in him. And so I went with him, we threw a changeup to Carlos Beltran in the first pitch, and it completely changed the whole at-bat, the outlook of the whole, the whole outcome of the at-bat probably changed. Um, but I don't think I got there unless I had those deep talks, honest talks. Like Bueno, Albert Pujols and Yachty have a friendship that goes way beyond baseball, and it traces its roots to a request two decades ago in Jupiter. I know his friend, I'm more than his friend. I'm like his, one of his big brother. Uh, Yachty, to me, uh, has a really special place in my heart. In spring training, we were in between the batting cage and the clubhouse, and his dad, we were hitting in there. His dad approached me, and he's like, hey, this is my young son. I want you to treat him like your little brother. And that's what I've done. That brotherhood endured through a decade apart, but it ended right back in St. Louis so they could close out their storied careers together. I'm just blessed to be part, a little part in his life, you know, and uh, I think, uh, you know, like I say, you know, great to accomplish great things in this game, but I think the relationship that you built and you have that off the field, that's even better. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Katie Brandenburg. Albert Pujols went from a 13th round pick to a baseball icon. His celebrity transcends the game and garnered tributes from famous fans, including St. Louis and John Hamm. Eleven years of memories has turned into 12. And at 42, how is it possible you were as good as ever? Doing things people have to see to believe. From the first moment to the final moments, you have always been different. Few are Hall of Famers. Even fewer define the game. Your glove is golden. Your bat is silver. You are everyone's favorite player. And how could you not be? You've come through in every scenario. In the game's great cathedrals, in homecomings, in October. All-star, MVP, world champion. Thank you for coming home. Thank you for showing what it means to be a partner. Welcome back. You know, this summer, every night seemed to bring new records and milestones. Our Brett McMillan joins us with more on that. Brett? Thanks, Ozzy. 2022 truly was historic. The greatness of Pujols and Molina was on display as they passed some of the most iconic names in both baseball and Cardinals history. Here's a look back at some of those accomplishments. There's Yadier Molina's first base hit in the major leagues. And there's the first base hit in the Major League career. A 
of Albert Pujols. Their first hits were the first of many. Since those initial games two decades ago, both players have written their names on some pretty impressive lists. Here's a look at what they've achieved. It feels like Albert is top 10 in nearly every all-time offensive category. According to MLB's official stats partner, Elias Sports Bureau, he's ninth in hits, fifth in doubles, and third in walk-off RBI, second in RBI overall, and second in total bases, sandwiched right there between Hank Aaron and Stan Musial. And he's third in extra base hits. Then there's the big one, home runs. On September 11th, he hit career homer 697, surpassing A-Rod for fourth all-time. He has homered off more pitchers than anyone in baseball history. Yachty is leaving his own mark. He's one of only eight catchers in history with 2,000 hits and 1,000 RBI. The other seven are in the Hall of Fame. Yachty has the fifth most hits of any catcher and the fourth most doubles. But defense is where he truly separates himself. He's fourth all-time in games caught, also fourth in innings caught, second all-time in starts at the position, eighth in caught stealing percentage, and second in shutouts by a catcher. He's also second all-time in number of seasons catching 100 or more games. His 16 seasons trails only Ivan Rodriguez with 17. No catcher in the history of baseball has more putouts than Yadier Molina. And of course, he and Adam Wainwright now own the all-time mark for starts by a battery. All these accomplishments will someday be honored on a grand scale, both Yadi and Albert eligible for the Cardinals Hall of Fame after three years and Cooperstown after five. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. Ozzy has more of The Last Inning, a tribute to Yadi and Albert when we return. The Cardinals held a retirement ceremony for Yachty and Albert before the final regular season home game. It was long anticipated, and it didn't disappoint. I think it's great that we get to come together today as a group, as a city, as a fan base, and celebrate two of the greatest icons that this city has ever seen wearing the St. Louis Cardinal uniform. Albert, you're an amazing person, you're an amazing player, but you're the best one of the best teammates I've ever had, and a man that everybody should look up to for everything you do on and off the field. And next, my catch partner, Yadi Molina. I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm not gonna miss having wet shoes and wet pants from you pouring water bottles down my back when you're not playing but I am gonna miss playing catch with you every fifth day. Yadi, you're special to me. You're, you're more than a teammate. You become a brother to me. Your family's become family. I love you. You're my man. First of all, I want to say that we finally and Mo for believing me all these years and give me the opportunity to play baseball here in San Luis. want to thank all the people and fans from Puerto Rico for the support and love all those years. Lo amos. I want to have a moment and tell my mom in Spanish, por todo sacrificio, que tú y mi papá hicieron juntos con mis tíos que a todos amos. Por enseñarme este lindo deporte, por hacerme un hombre de bien y de fe. Te amo, vieja, que Dios te dé muchos años más de vida, más alegría para todos nosotros. Te amo. Last, I'm proud, and it was a great honor to wear this uniform for 19 years here in San Luis.
in baseball heaven and with you the best fan in baseball thank you so much what a year so far to come back to the city of San Luis and find the joy and the love that I have for this game. I want to thank my teammates. Thank you for welcoming me back with open arms. And two special people in my life. One of them you hear speak, Yari and Bueno. Thank you guys for all those FaceTime and the off season and bringing me back here. And to all of you, Cardinal Nation, Best fans in baseball. Thank you so much for all your support, all the joy, all the tears that we have shared together. I love you all. You guys are always going to have a special play in my heart. God bless you all. Thank you. Albert tagging up from third in their final regular season home games. Number four drives in number five. Going back Reynolds at the wall. He's done it. He's done it. His final regular season home game. Number 702. He's tied the game. Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina's legacies will live on forever. The Cardinals celebrate players during their careers and honor them long after they retire. Jenna Fisher offered some thoughts on how Yadi, Albert, and their friend Adam Wainwright have been model Cardinals. You'll still be felt here long after you retire because your impact can't be summed up in a box score or on a bronze plaque. You understand what this uniform means, a hundred year old logo that stands for more than just baseball. The idea that how you compete means as much as the final score. Those who truly make an impact here don't just win, they set a standard. They make the person next to them want to be better on and off the field. You've done it all. Authored moments we play on a loop in our minds. Conjured smiles we'll never wipe away. Honored the past because you know it reaches into the present. You've shown what it means to lead, to demand better, that loyalty and selflessness are not lost in today's world. We show up every night because you've always shown up for us. In the big moments and the little gestures, you became one of us. And you'll always have a place with us. Because legacies don't ever retire. There's a long list of significant moments in Cardinals history, and Yachty and Albert have their names all over that list. Here's Emily Stevens with more on those big moments. Emily? Thanks, Ozzy. We've talked a lot about the rich history of the Cardinals in this show. While the long list of championships and historic moments span decades, the heart of the modern era belongs to Yachty and Albert. Let's dive into some of their biggest moments while wearing the birds on the bat. Postseason. It's a term you hear often when you're a Cardinals fan. With a history of 11 World Series titles, extending a season into October is part of a player's job. Yadi and Albert contributed to big playoff moments. It's Game 7 of the 2006 NLCS in New York. The game is tied in the top of the ninth. Yadier Molina hits a two-run bomb into left field. Chavez at the wall, this ball is gone, and St. Louis takes the cards. A hang on to the win by that three-to-one score, advancing to the World Series, which they won. Three to miss. The 
Chicago, the world champion. In the 2005 NLCS, an excited Houston crowd cheers as the Cards are facing elimination. Pujols has given St. Louis the lead. Albert Pujols homers off dominant closer Brad Lidge, silencing the crowd, extending the Cardinals' season to Game Six. Yachty came up clutch in Game Four of the 2019 NLDS. In the bottom of the eighth inning, he tied the game with an RBI single off Freddie Freeman's glove. And this game is tied! And again, during extra innings, Yachty delivers. Cardinals have won game Walking four. it off, St. Louis would win game five in Atlanta. Albert hit not one, but three home runs in game three of the 2011 World Series. Back at the track, he's got another. Joining Babe Ruth and Reggie Jackson as the only three people to ever hit three home runs in a World Series game. How about three on the night? Yachty and Albert will forever be known throughout not only Cardinals history, but baseball history. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. Ozzy has more of The Last Inning, a tribute to Yachty and Albert, when we return. When you think of Albert Pujols, you think of greatness. When you think of Yadier Molina, the term legend comes to mind. When you put the two together, you get champions. St. Louis and Joe Buck was the soundtrack of many of their October triumphs. Earlier this season, Joe interviewed Albert on first base at Bush Stadium to discuss Pujols' final season and career as a whole. How are you, my right. friend? Good to see you, pal. So good to see you, man. How's everything? Everything's great. Yeah. Everything is great. Awesome. Uh, thanks for doing this. Yeah, buddy. I feel like on some level you're more willing to do this kind of stuff than maybe you've ever been. <laughs> am, I, am I right about that? Do you kind of want to document this last season in St. Louis? Probably, you know, I think it's really special. I think, uh, you know, just remember uh, 22, what, 22 years ago, I mean, first time stepping on the field. Where was it? Where was the old stadium? Right across the street, yeah. I think. Back that way. Yeah, and to be able to, you know, to be back and just reflect on everything, you know, uh, 10 years after you leave here and come back and just have another opportunity, you know, to finish your career where everything started for me is uh, just a blessing, you know. So I really try to enjoy every moment, you know, every time that I take the, the field, uh, every stadium that I go for the last time because it is going to be the last time that I go as an active player, you know. Are you thinking numbers or when, yeah. when, does, it, when does that moment get you? Is it when you get past first base? Is it, or, or, or even at all? I don't, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm gonna have plenty of time to look back and really sit down with my kids and friends and really look the amazing things that I've done in this game. Don't get me wrong, it's not like I don't know where I stand in history, but it's hard. It's hard for me, and I'm being honest with you, it's hard for me to really like focus on the number when I'm an active player. You know, because I know that there's going to be more. Where, where, where do you think you get the ability to block out the pressure? Because it's been that way since the first time I saw you in 2001 in spring training. And I remember Tony La Russa telling my dad and me, I want to see this kid fail once. <laughs> like that game you guys played in that spring training, I don't know if you remember it, I do. It was at the Atlanta Braves, and he started you at shortstop, and you hit a home run over the scoreboard. And it, it, La Russa came to my dad and me the next day. He's like, this kid's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I, I put him in positions mm -hmm. where I expect him to fail just so we're not taking this kid along if he's not ready. You yeah. proved you were ready then. You prove you're ready every time. How do you block that pressure out? Where does it come from? That's great. That's a great question because sometimes I even ask myself, where does it come from? And it's a gift. It's a gift from God. You know, I mean, it's a gift from above. This is what I tell these young players right now, like, man, the early that you can pick this thing and the early that you can separate what you want, the better superstar, the best success that you're going to have in this game. At the end of the day, just never take anything for granted. No matter what kind of success you have, no matter what kind of year, whether MVP or bad year, just try to get better and better every year. And that's something that I have separated in my life. We're standing here at first base and, and we're talking hitting and home runs and all that other stuff. But I know you to be somebody who really takes pride in his defense. You and Yachty, how, what, what, can you give us the sign that would happen when you go behind a runner 
<laughs> and he'd throw down to first base. I mean, what, what I can't was... give you that secret in camera because then I'm in trouble, you know, I can't. Is it, is it, it, just... is it him or is it you? Both. It just, it's always been a connection uh, between both of us. I mean, you know, we always on the same page, Hen and I, and that's what's so good. Like, besides our relationship that we have built since he got to this organization, it's just, just the understanding of this game. I remember the beginning of your career, I think it was Scott Rowland, somebody said to me, this guy runs the bases, he, he becomes invisible. Yeah. <laughs> was, was it, somebody used to make fun of you for no, that, in a good way, because yeah, yeah. you'd steal a base, you go first to third, you go first to home, you go second yeah. to home when, you know, no, you're a no, good base it. I remember, man, I spent a whole week with Lou Brock here, and second by mostly because he told me, I want you to make sure, I want to make sure that you can score with any base hit. Doesn't matter how hard, how slow it is. If you, anybody, a fast runner can score, I want you to be able to score. And I knew that if I want to get better running the base, I'm one of the slowest guys in the, not the slower, because I think the slowest is in my team, Jaddy. <laughs> uh, but- That's uh, a shot. <laughs> but I, um, but those times I spent a lot of time with him and who's better than, you know, Lou. So I'm always looking, always looking to try to take advantage of anything. Before the break, we showed you part one of Albert's exit interview with Joe Buck. Here's part two. I did the All-Star game in 99, which is before you, but there was a moment at Fenway Park when all of the current players gathered around Ted Williams. And it was an organic moment. It's a history, it, I saw it, I haven't yeah, seen it. Yeah, it. It, just, it just happened. And it was cool to see players of today recognize greatness of somebody who was unbelievable in the 1940s. And, and it was a beautiful, I had chills, I couldn't talk. I was in the booth crying because it was just so beautiful with him back at Fenway Park. And, and I, I sense that you got a big lift from this All-Star game in Los Angeles. I didn't do that game, but I, I, I saw plenty of it. And you got that love from young, old, veteran, rookie, whoever was there. They wanted to show you how much you mean to them. You're watched and the, these young guys watch you. And now you're that guy. What is that like for you to be the, the, the guy that everybody wants to be around and learn from? I think it's really special. Like to be able to have that moment, it was a moment at the Honda Derby that it wasn't planned. I mean, to be able to have the, play, the best players of this era, the best player in this game right now to embrace you, your peers, your people that you compete against, uh, your teammates, I mean, it's really, really special moment, and it's gonna go out there in one of my top moments of my career. You know, when I all see, said I think it down. you got more from that than the swings and the home run. I derby. did. I'm telling you, get a you. lift. It, like, it, I'm, I did. I, I swear. Like after that first round, when everybody embraced me, like I really was like, man, like I was just having fun. Now I feel like I want to win it. Last question here, without ever having asked you this before, I'm betting that you were a good student in school. Were you a good student in school? I was, I love, I love school. Because you're a studier and, yeah. and, and you study the opposition and you look for trends and tips and- You have to. Yeah, you but, but it, I feel like it's a lost art. Like guys are still coming to you, I'm sure like, hey, what do you see from yeah. you know, the Houston right-hander and, and yeah. you're picking up little clues to maybe know what's coming. It's just little things like that in this game. Yeah, everybody's really focusing now on silver metric, launch angle and all that stuff. But remember, you still need to do the little things, the little things, observe, like when can I take advantage? If this guy is tipping, or if I can steal it back because he's giving it to me, he's doing one five, one seven. I mean, all those little things go way beyond. And those are the things that when I'm sitting in that bench and you see me maybe laughing and, and laughing with Jody and Wainwright, but both of You're my watching. eyes is on that pitcher, on that, on that catcher, and on the game. It's to Oficina Abierto. I see. Your oh. office is open down there? Yeah. Can we go walk and talk mm -hmm. down at home plate? Yeah. You're a very humble guy, but when you dig in right here, this is yours, isn't it? Yeah. 
I want to make sure that when I step out this batter's box, I own this. No matter who I'm facing, trust in my work and execute, you know, whatever I had to execute that night. Was it weird to dig into this batter's box as a visiting player? Like, what was that like when you came back for the first time with the Angels? I got to walk and and walk, I got boo out of it, you know, because he walked <laughs> They me, wanted to see you in. You know, and I think Dakota threw a pitch up and in on me and they were booing him. And then I think the next hit the 100 on Saturday. But I think, uh, you know, to be back here, it was, I think the fans were ready. I was ready. And it was a moment once again of my career that was really, really special. And people ask me, were you surprised about how the fans, re I wasn't surprised. We had the best fans in baseball. They respect they believe in history and they know what i did for this organization what i have done for this organization so they they enjoy that they respect that and they honor that every time i step in this body's box whether i was a visiting guy coming in or playing with your home team it was really special because you know what 47,000 people bring in every night you know and joyful and gelling your name and and really excited Earlier, we showed you parts one and two of Albert Pujols' exit interview with Joe Buck. Here's part three. I have called you hitting three home runs in a World Series game in Texas. Uh, I rem I've called you hitting a home run in game one in 06 of Verlander. I would imagine, though, as you look back, all of that pales in comparison to winning it all here in 06 and 2011. Like that game, game six of 2011, is, is I, I have said many times, it's the best game I've ever seen. And of course, I went to La Russa after the game, and I was like, wow, that was unbelievable. He's like, it's only good if we win tomorrow. And you won the next day. Yeah. Just the way that we come back, and everybody only look at the, the free or my Arbat that I got that walk, or the Bertman got that base hit. But remember the Daniel De Carso and the John Jay yeah. against Darren Oliver? They had a great arbat from the left side, and those guys got us going. And that's what's so good about a championship ball club. Like, you want to make sure that the guys that are on the bench, they understand the game. Because those guys came huge for us during the course of the year, but then they came huge that night for us. That, to me, is one of the top moments of my career. If it's not number one, it's right there, number two. And, and, and that's what's so awesome. And then. For a kid, you know, a local kid like Debbie Fritz, you know, to win in the MVP and to do it in his hometown, man, it was pretty special. I'm just going to tell you right now, you have a pretty good shot of being on that wall out there. And you talked about Lou Brock, you were around Bob Gibson, you are around so many greats that wanted to hang around this organization. That's the cool thing, especially in spring training, because you're, you're eating lunch with a Hall of Famer and you were a kid back then. It was actually listening to these guys and learning from some of the greats that ever played. Musial too. I miss, I miss those guys coming in this year for opening day, you know, and not to see Luke, you know, not to see, um, you know, Gibson, Red Shanning, man. Like, it really hit me because, you know, yes, I had the talent. Yes, I had the ability. God has given me that. Yes, I put the hard work, but you also need to have great people around you. You know, and those were the people I think that came around me, that told me the right way. And just little things here and there, you know, it was just shouting with your dad, just telling me about something that happened in the 60 or in the 70, just something really like yeah. that probably took my mind out of the game from right now and just to have a little fun or make it laugh or like a guy like, like Gibson, you know, they say, if I was in your area and I would have faced you, I would have thrown you a fastball opening and then I slide it down and away. <laughs> and then if you look at me, then I hit you, then it's our bad. You know, just stuff like that, you know, because of that, I think it allowed me to have the career that I have. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, you're buddy. just a wonderful human. And like I said at the ESPYs, you're one of the few guys that you see from a distance and everybody hopes you're as nice as they think you are. And then they meet you and they realize you're even nicer. You're a great <laughs> human being and then a great ball player. No, I I'm appreciate proud of you. it, man. It means a lot, buddy. Right. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Love you, bro. Thank you so much.
Saying goodbye to two players of this caliber at the same time is unique in baseball history. John Goodman summed up the novelty of a once-in-a-lifetime season. This is special for you, but you can't imagine what it's like for us. We've never had a summer like this. Sure, we've said goodbye before. There we go. We've gazed at the long shadows cast by legends. But this is different. This time it's twice as hard. Your careers haven't just spanned a generation of fans, they've created one. Of course, you'd leave us with one final memory. A goodbye only you two could author. We shouldn't be surprised though. After all, four and five do go together. But this isn't the end of two careers. It's the final word on an era. Because in 130 years of signature moments, they just won't go away. You two have set an impossible standard. And it will take us a while to learn what this game looks like without you. So when the final word is written, when you take that last bow, It'll mean as much to us as it does to you. Thank you for a once-in-a-lifetime summer from two once-in-a-lifetime players. Welcome back. It's hard to see an era end. 2022 was emotional for fans, players, alumni, and front office employees alike. Cardinals baseball is a tradition handed from generation to generation, both on and off the field. There will be more great players in Cardinals history, but there will never be anyone quite like Yachty or Albert. Just as we will never see another Stan, Gibby, or Lou, Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols made countless memories for our generation of Cardinal fans. Now they join me as ambassadors for this great franchise, a representation of the best our game, region, and town have to offer. Their play earned them a spot among the very best in Cardinals history, and I look forward to the day that I welcome them into the Red Jacket Club. That's it for today, and for everyone involved with the show, I'm Ozzie Smith. Cardinals Insider returns this March for season eight. Until then, so long from Bush Stadium.